So we're here at Linear Fisheries and uh, we've decided to come onto Hardwick. And the reason for that is I want to show you how I use the deeper and I primarily use it when I'm zig fishing and just to map out a swim to get a, a basic idea of the topography. You know, I know it's up and down out there, there's a, there's a load of features in there, some really deep water, it comes up abruptly in, in certain areas. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the session. I'm going to show you how to use the deeper and how I use the deeper. There's a whole army of naysayers out there that would say that using a, a castable echo sounder is cheating. Um, echo sounders have been used in fishing for years and there's loads of different reasons why you'd use one. You know, do I use a, a deeper primarily to find fish? And the answer is no. You know, I use it primarily to, to map the swim much quicker than I can with a marker float. If I want to make a, let's say I want to make a, a 50, 60 yard cast and I want to know what the depth is between me and that, that point, I would have to bring the float in and pop it to the surface several times through the swim. And that would alert the carp to, to me being there, you know, a bright orange marker float coming up and down through the swim is not ideal, certainly not multiple times. With the deeper, I can put it out where I've seen activity, I can then draw it through the swim, look at my phone, get a gauge all the time as it's coming across the surface, I'm looking back at my phone, gauging the depth, and any sort of up and down or anything of note that I like the look of, all I have to do is stick the, the deeper into the clip at that point, and then I can wrap it around the distance sticks and then I can interrogate that area with a, a leading rod. But if I'm, if I'm honest, I, I use it mainly for zig fishing. You know, what I try to do is, I, if I know I'm gonna be fishing zigs and I've seen activity, I don't wanna to have to cast out there with the marker float to scare them off. I overcast with the deeper, pass where I've seen the activity. I draw the deeper through the swim until I, I, I can see it on the surface level where I've seen the activity. I can then check the depth, put it in the clip again, put it around the distance licks, and I know in that situation, if I cast out the same amount of wraps, and I know how deep it is, I'm then able to gauge the depth that I'm fishing at. Wow. <laughs> Looking at the sun just absolutely done me. Oh my god. It's 20 foot and the, the, a lot of them are 7 foot down. In that depth of water you don't want to be using massive, massive hook links. And just by recasting you're scaring the fish all the time to change depth so yeah, I think I'm going to reel that rod in, try a little bit higher, and um, yeah, get it adjustable on there. Oh my god, black one. It's absolute carp soup out there. Having a little bit of local knowledge, you know, Rob Burgess, our quarter coach, he's put me onto this swim called the Christmas Tree, so it's a really good area. It's a short range swim, maximum limit of 40 yards, but because of that, you know, the fish hang around in the, in the deep water just behind. I've heard all about this lake, how it is all up and down, and, and the depths just change dramatically all over the swim. So, oh, I've got a take, that's a take. Well, the adjustable's been out there maybe 45 minutes, and um, I set it six foot down. Um, had a little chat on the phone to Rob Burgess and it's, what he said was it sort of mirrored what I was thinking or looking back over my previous captures that most of the takes on zigs, not always but a lot of them, they come in the, um, the top third and although I'd seen the fish on the deeper all through the layers I think I was too low so I haven't put that adjustable out into the deeper water and uh, I set it six foot down, bit of black foam, no tipper on there, just, just the black foam 
and uh, 45 minutes later it's off. The adjustables, you know, a lot of people, they can't get their head around them, you know. The, the main thing is avoiding the tangles. Once you can uh, cast them out there effectively and know that they're not tangled, you know, you can fish in much deeper water than you can with conventional zigs, which opens up, you know, areas of the lake that other people probably aren't exploiting. Oh. Now we know what depth to fish, I'm sure there'll be quite a few more. Well, the first one is always the most important. You know, you don't know you're doing it right until you get a bite. And uh, adjustable zig, six foot down from the surface, and it wasn't out there too long at all before this is uh, taking the bait. A little bit of black foam, always a winner. I really want to get that rod back out there because I'm sure there's more to come. That adjustable zig we would murder this gas. This is a better fish, this one. There's the float. There's the fish. Yeah. How about that? Adjustable zig rigs. Oh yeah. I'm going to enjoy this. Well, here's Hardwick Carp number two. Another one on the uh, adjustable zig rig. After seeing the fish in the deeper and getting the depth correct, and fishing over the deep water effectively using the adjustable zig rig. A little bit of black foam, and this is the result. Just over 30 pounds, just under 31, 30 and a half. A lovely carp and a, a good sign for things to come. So the adjustable zig rig is something that not a lot of people use. And the reason they don't is because they're a little bit scared of it. They haven't done it before, so they're unsure and they don't try it. But what it does is it opens up the possibilities to be able to fish in really deep water off the bottom, you know, on really busy lakes. Fish tend to, they can come off of the features, the shallower bits, move into deep water, not to feed, but just to hang out in safety, knowing that the dust don't get fish for there. And uh, with the adjustable zig rig, what you do, you basically cast it out where you want to fish, you pop it to the surface, much like you would with a marker float. And when you see the, the float on the surface, you place the rod into the rest, tighten the line really slowly, and just tighten it until the float just dips from sight. And the key bit there is having a, a pre-measured hook link. Your hook link, I measure it from the second ring on my rod back to the reel seat. So once the float has just dipped from sight, I take the line just at that second ring, I bring it back to the reel seat, and that enables me to know that the hook bait's exactly on the surface. And from that point, I just work it down one foot at a time and you leave it in the rest. You know, it's, it, it enables you not to have to recast to change depth. So one minute I could be fishing, say six foot, and it gets a little bit warmer. I might see some black shapes out on the surface. 
can just let out two feet of line and know that I've I'm not needed to recast, not scare the fish, and I'm now fishing at a different depth. Get in. This is working an absolute treat. <laughs> a little bit of black foam, always a winner. <laughs>